she suggested we go to this ayahuasca retreat. I was open to it. But then on the plane on the way over there, she gave me her phone to like log something down. And I saw on her phone this note that said destabilization, a technique used in brainwashing. I was like, what's this? And she gave me this weird look, kind of bared her teeth. And she was like, oh, that's to do with my sister-in-law. I tried to brush it off. It was pretty sus. So what happened but at I this retreat? Oh, shit. Is this loud? Yes. Who is this? Shep. Like Shepard. Shep. What's up, Shep? How you doing? Yeah, not bad. How are you? Hanging in there. How can I get you today, Shep? Well, I've got kind of a weird story. Um, so, my ex-girlfriend uh, tried to brainwash me with ayahuasca, but I kind of knew that she was trying to brainwash me, so it didn't work. Um, but through the process of ayahuasca, I kind of got real in touch with myself, and uh, I figured out that I was still in love with her cousin who I met when I was six. Mm, where should we start with this? Uh, so she tried to like, did she did she drug you? No. So we were in a like long term relationship. It was pretty imbalanced. It was like a very toxic relationship that I shouldn't have been in, and uh, it was all kind of falling apart. I kind of had enough of it, and uh, she suggested we go to this ayahuasca retreat, and <clears throat> she'd already had like a an ego death on MDMA and kind of confessed to all this manipulative stuff that she was doing in the relationship. And that was really interesting. But then what, what off. kind of, what kind of manipulative stuff? Um, kind of like emotionally just has her hold over me and kind of everyone else in her family, to be honest, um, has control of what everyone does, all their decisions. Like she had, I, I can message my friends or my mom without her knowing about it. She had control over what I bought, where I went, what I did. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so she had this uh, ego death on MDMA and realized she was doing all of it, which was really interesting. But then where, when it wore off, um, she kind of started to freak out because she, like, exposed herself, I guess, and then started trying to... Um, paint me out as being some kind of narcissist manipulator and stuff and um, her craziness sort of ramped up a lot and yeah so then she suggested we go to this ayahuasca retreat and I was open to it because I'd read a bit about it and I thought yeah it sounds good it could could be good for me and she might get something out of it who knows but then on the plane on the way over there um, I was sat on the plane and she gave me her phone to like log something down about the flights or something I don't know what it was and so I opened up notes and I saw on her phone this note that said um, uh, destabilization, a technique used in brainwashing. And I was like, what's this? And she gave me this weird look, like she kind of bared her teeth and she was like, oh, that's that's to do with my sister-in-law sort of thing. Just kind of tried to brush it off. But it was pretty sus. And I was kind of like, oh, okay. And I mean, the note being about destabilization, like after, after my ayahuasca ceremony, she was basically like, destabilizing as fuck. She tried to kind of interrogate me and tell me what all my visions meant and try and let, paint it all me, my mom. What's, what's your name again, man? Shep. Shep. Shep, let me ask you something. And I'm not, I, I promise you, I'm not saying this as like a, in, in, in like a blaming sense. I'm asking you this because I genuinely want to know like sincerely what, how your brain kind of processed all this. But yeah. when she told you all these these things and and ways that she manipulated you, uh, and how she was trying to keep you from your friends and uh, you know your family and 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 mm -hmm. like all this stuff. Why did you? What stopped you from 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 leaving? So it was a really codependent sort of situation. So a lot of the relationship, I didn't feel like I could leave because I was very isolated. But at the same time. I felt like I'd seen something good in her that I kind of wanted to get through to. And kind of the plot kind of thickens because by this point, I think we had um, our son was like a year and a half old. Oh, you guys have a kid together. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was really trying to get through to, you know, the good in her to try and sort things out and to try and help the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happened but at I this retreat? So I was there, um, her cousin was there, because um, her cousin and her cousin's partner at the time went out um, like two weeks before us. But then her cousin decided she wanted to stay while I was there with my toxic manipulative, manipulative partner. 
So it ended up being me and my partner and her cousin at this retreat. And this is her cousin who I've known since I was six years old and who kind of introduced me to the whole situation. And yeah, it it was basically her interrogating me um, after every ceremony, trying to tell me what it all meant, trying to make sure that I was blaming my family for all of it. But I kind of could see what she was doing, so it didn't really work. Oh my god! And, still, but still, man, that sounds like a complete nightmare. Being on, being on an intense psychedelic drug while someone's trying to like fuck with your understanding of reality. I mean, that's that sounds yeah. that sounds awful. Yeah, it was it was kind of a lot to hold on to, but I managed to. I mean, I had a fucking amazing experience. If I'm honest, it was like the best thing I've ever done. Yeah, I had like an ex. Even yeah, even like with an- like all this like shit. Yeah, because it kind of has a way of just cutting through all the bullshit and you just get right down to the core of you, like no matter what's going on. And I was there, like, I really wanted to just work on myself and get what I could out of it. So, yeah, it was amazing. I had, like, an exorcism. I was talking to aliens trying to save the world. Like, uh, I saw the spirit world. Like, loads of crazy shit happened. It was, it was amazing. Cool. And, um, yeah, I'd love to do it again. But, um, I mean, this all happened, like, six years ago now. And um, so, basically... We got back after the retreat. It was pretty clear it wasn't going to work out. Um, We were living abroad in France, so I moved into a flat down the road, like an apartment down the road, so I could still be close to my kid. But then she cut me off from him and said I couldn't see him anymore, which, like, I mean, she helped me move out, and then she said that I abandoned him as soon as I moved into this apartment and said that I couldn't see him anymore. And so, right, okay. Um, So I ended up moving back to the UK, saving up what I could to get a lawyer, go to court, get access to my kid, which I got. But um, it was actually after I'd moved out um, and I was doing like a lot of meditating and using what I'd learned at the ayahuasca retreat. And um, I had a small amount of MDMA that I took and it all like hit me, like slapped me around the face that I had all these underlying feelings for her cousin, who was this girl that I met when I was six years old. And... I told them. I mean, I told my my ex first. I said, "Look, I've realised I've got feelings for your cousin," and she said, "Well, I don't give a shit. Go and tell her. Then fine." So I said, "Okay," and I went. And I told her, and at first she didn't believe me. Um, she just thought I was just trying to say it to be a dick or trying to hurt um, my ex partner. Um, but throughout the course of the conversation, I kind of managed to convince her that I really meant it. And then, uh, so my crazy ex goes, all right, well, why don't you figure out how you feel about him then, you know? And so she started trying to figure it out and talk to me about it. And it felt like we were really starting to get somewhere. And we kind of figured out that there, was, there were feelings there and she didn't know what it meant yet. But she said, well, I'm going to go and tell her that there's feelings there. And uh, I said, I don't know if you should just go and tell her, like, this probably needs to be attacked or whatever. But she was like, no, no, trust me, it'll be fine. So she went and told um, my crazy ex, and she flipped. She was like, she screamed in her face, I want to rip you in half. And, um, yeah, so this girl that I met when I was six, um, she just, like, suddenly became, she kind of retreated, became very confused. And uh, she said, basically, that, Actually, well, they both started trying to convince me that I was confused. And actually, I had feelings for the abusive person I'd just broken up with. And this was all six years ago. Yeah. Yeah, this was six years ago. And um, I actually just recently, just a couple of weeks ago, because I had a girlfriend last year and I tried to move past the situation and sort of just get on with my life and I still see my kid when I can but I realized kind of recently that I those feelings are still there like I don't have closure because of how it all ended it didn't feel like we actually got closure so I emailed this girl I met when I was six because I still have her email address I don't have a phone number and I explained that I still had feelings for her and I felt like I wanted to meet her and talk to her and, how recently uh, did, how recently did you email her like two weeks ago. Okay. Did she respond? 
Well, no, and I don't know if she got it or not, but I don't see why she would have changed her email address. But the thing is, if she got, because she lives, they live together. As soon as I moved out, this girl that I grew up with when I was six moved in because my abusive ex always needs like a personal assistant to run around and do her all her cleaning and cooking and stuff. So they live together and they probably would have both read the email and the fuck knows what's going on over there. It might have caused a shit storm, it might not. How long, it, uh, well, how long has it been since you've seen either of these people? So when I go and see my son, to be honest, um, she normally sends my son out with, she had two children from a previous relationship. And she usually sends her daughter out with my son, so I see her. So I haven't seen the girl I grew up with for a couple of years. And it's probably been about the same sort of time uh, with my abusive ex as well. I've just seen my son. Um, I pick him up outside the house. How old's your son? Ten. How old are you? I'm 37. Hmm. And uh, how's everything going with your kid? Cause, uh, it, cause, I mean, God fucking damn, dude, this situation is, uh, it was insane. It was insane if you didn't have a kid and having a kid in between, it makes it like a, a hundred times more crazy. I know. So she's basically, since I moved out, convinced him that I don't actually love him and I'm pretending to love him to mm-hmm. hurt her. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of seems to be buying that story. Mm. Um, so the last few times I've seen him, he's fully been, I mean, it's weird because we've still got, we we were really close up until I moved out when he was three and a half. Like we were super close. We get on really, really well. And that's still there. But then you can see where him having to live in his mom's story all the time is messing with him because yeah, he'll, he'll say that he doesn't believe I'm, I actually love him. And, um, yeah, I don't know. So it's it's tricky. I'm just doing what I can do. And I'm trying not to, because obviously she's painting her whole story out to him, and I'm obviously trying not to paint my whole story out to him because I think it's it's messed up. But at the same time, when you're in a situation when you know they're being told all of that, so like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? So I'm just trying to be there and keep contact with him and keep seeing him, keep spending time with him, having fun. But. I mean, I don't get phone calls with him too often now. He's got a phone number, but I'm not allowed it. Um, she's, you know, she and her whole family talk to him on the phone, but um, for whatever reason, she won't give me his number. Hmm. And I assume that your custody agreement looks something like she spends, he spends most of his time over there and you get to see him occasionally? Yeah, I get to see him for half his school holidays or any weekend of any month I can um, go and see him, but I need to give them a month's notice, basically. Did you have to go through a kind of a crazy court battle? Yeah, in France, like with a French lawyer and translator and everything. It was expensive wow. and it was long. Yeah, it took about six months, but got it done and got to see him again. God damn, man. How you doing? Yeah, I'm actually okay. Um, uh, this year, I've actually been starting to feel pretty good within myself. And I think that's why I sort of I got to the point of thinking, actually, I need closure rather than just not being sure what to do about it and being in loads of pain and just, you know, not knowing how I can move on with my life. Well, um, fuck, man. I mean, closure is like you you can never I, – I mean, you know this, man. Like, You, you can never um... – you know, closure, closure is something you got to give to yourself, right? Because if you if you mm-hmm. need closure from this cousin or or, or this ex, you're never going to get it because you can't you you can't make other people give you closure. You can only For sure give it within yourself. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, I think by emailing her, I just wanted because she probably would have had no idea that I did still have any kind of feelings because. I didn't really, I didn't give that impression or give much away over the past few years. I mean, the time that I saw her two years ago or whatever, this girl I grew up with, I, I barely spoke to her, you know. And it's because, I mean, she said a bunch of messed up stuff, stuff in the whole court battle. I mean, she, she submitted to court that I shouldn't see my son ever again, this girl I grew up with. But, I mean, I know that's not her. I know it's coming from um, my ex. So, I don't know, it's a tricky one, like, 
I had all these mixed feelings about it all. Mm. But when I actually get down to the core of it all, you know, if she turned up on my doorstep, I'd just invite her in straight away. Um, but are you talking so about your cousin? I, wanted... I mean, not your cousin. The... No, you don't have a crush on my, your my cousin. cousin. Oh, your ex's cousin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess I wanted her to know that to just have the opportunity to know that actually, you know, if she did want to get out of the well, look, 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 look. Get with yeah, me. Yeah. Get with me on this. Get with me on this because I, this is what I want to know. What? Mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, I'm really sorry to hear that you're, you're in such a precocious situation with your son, because that's. I yeah, mean, that's that's thanks. that's that's brutal. That's really brutal. I'm sorry that you're dealing with that. I want to know this. Who's who else is, do you got in your life right now? Do you are you dating? Someone else? Are you going out on? Are you trying to form a new relationship? Do you have friends? Like what? What? What does your support system look like outside of that? Yeah, I mean, I've got friends around me. I was in a relationship for all of last year, um, but I think it was at the tail end of that relationship. I had the niggling feeling about not having closure, um, but it wasn't just that. There were lots of reasons the relationship didn't work out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've. I've got my family who live pretty close by i've got friends i go skateboarding with you know go down the pub and hang out and you know i've got some good mates so yeah it's okay it's not like i'm on my own and i'm just suffering this dark room um or anything so no my okay. life's okay I'm, I'm i'm enjoying my job i'm a youth support worker i work with teenagers and that's really rewarding so no things are going pretty good i'm feeling pretty positive and i think i just wanted to see if I could get closure and I know what you mean I mean you can only give closure to yourself but I want to give it an opportunity before I go okay you know what I'm just gonna leave it all behind and move on with my life it's hard I get I I I mean I get it I get why you want closure and I get why you feel like you I get why people feel like they can't just give it to themselves um but it's a really powerful feeling when you kind of when you do throw up your hands and go I can only I really can only give myself closure to this thing you know mm-hmm. you kind of you kind of like relinquish this desire for control over this thing that you fundamentally have zero control over and then yeah and then weirdly you you regain control you know cuz it's within it's within your control to accept you have no control and that makes you feel for a little sure. bit more powerful over this otherwise powerless position yeah yeah, I do get that. Um, and I think, you know, I, I could definitely, I know I'm going to be feeling optimistic about moving forward with my life if I do, you know, just get to a point where it's like, you know what, it's done, it's in the past and just move forwards. But, um, yeah, I guess it was just um, figuring out that I still have feelings there. It was just like, all right, well, I'm just going to reach out and just check in one last time. Uh, we'll see so, what happens, um... I guess. But all th- I mean I mean get, you know all things considered the fact that you seem like you're doing pretty well with this this crazy situation is I'm very impressed by you know you didn't let it crumble yeah, you or you know you're not the fact that you're not sitting in a dark room uh, uh, thinking about your your cousin and 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 all this not your I don't know why I keep calling this woman that you uh, are are attracted to I don't know why I keep saying My cousin, it's your cousin. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's cool. I, I, I mean, it's also good that you're not <laughs> sitting in a dark room thinking about how much you love your cousin, whether this woman's yeah, cousin or your that'd cousin. Good, it's good that you're not sitting in a dark room thinking about either. Um, yeah. So I mean, good, good on you, man. I mean, just uh, uh, the fact that you're able to live a, a a happy life despite some pretty miserable circumstances is something that uh, uh, I'm very, I'm very impressed by. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's taken a while. It's almost um, what didn't help a lot, but I was using it to cope for the first few years is I was smoking a bunch of weed, but I stopped doing that, and it's really helped me to start feeling a lot more positive about everything. So that was a while ago now that I stopped, but it's definitely a good call. As much as it feels like it helps, like, in the moment, um, long-term, bigger picture, it doesn't help anything. So Tell us, I mean, before we go, tell us uh, anything else like that. Anything else, what else has made you feel... Uh, you know, good in your life, despite all this. For anyone else listening, who's like, you know, maybe they're going, maybe they're in the, you're like in the, uh, you've like, 
you know, in the in the final stages of, of like dealing with this stuff. And it sounds like you've been able to process it pretty well. What's your advice or what's worked for you to anyone else who's maybe uh, dealing with some crazy shit? I would say um, listen to yourself, trust yourself, forgive yourself. You can only do what you can do. And you know what is not helping you. So just don't do it. Just stop doing that stuff. And um, eventually you will start to get in tune with what you feel like you need and what you feel like you want to do. And just keep listening to that. And um, things can be okay. Things can always turn around. Things can always get better. Well, Shep, is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? No, I think we pretty much covered it. I just think it's crazy that you actually called and I got to talk to you about all this. I was fucking nervous at the beginning of the call, I'm not going to lie. But, um, yeah, man, no, it's cool. And um, yeah, I hope everyone has a good day. Hey, uh, take care, Shep, and good luck in all of your future endeavors. Nice one. Thanks, Gek. See ya. Take care, man. Man, that was a wild one. Although I just, um, I really do, uh, I mean, that's such a, such a difficult situation. I want to say I respect that man's, um, optimism. I really do. I respect his optimism and, uh, the fact that he seems like he's doing pretty well despite all the things. And, and not just now, but even like in, when he's telling the story about, uh, how he, how he someone's trying to brainwash him while he's doing ayahuasca, and uh, like I said, that sounds horrible. And he's like, "No, it was such a great experience." And I'm like, "It's some uh, mental resilience being shown by this guy." So, um, props to him. Maybe it's a British thing. That was, I think that was the first call I've uh, had with a British person, where for for, for a full twenty minutes, I didn't. Uh, Interrupt by saying something about English McDonald's or or something like that. Um, so you know, props to me for that, and uh, thanks for calling, Shep. Hey, folks, this is Lyle. I am very excited to announce that I am going back on tour in 2024 to do Therapy Gecko Live all across the country. If you've never been to one of my live shows before, they are extremely fun unpredictable, wild evenings that involve a mix of group gecko therapy sessions as well as some material and presentations from myself. And if you've been to the show before, I have new presentations and will, of course, be interviewing new people. If you're a fan of the podcast, you're going to have a great time at the live show, so I hope to see you guys there. Go to therapygeckotour.com or check the link in the episode description for a full list of cities where tickets are available. Also, if you don't see your city on the list of cities, please still click the link and RSVP with your phone number so I can contact you when tickets go on sale for your city because I'm going to announce a bunch more dates very soon. Geck bless. Hello? Hello. Oh, no fucking way. Is this Lyle? Yeah, who is this? <laughs> oh my god, this is Nadia. Nadia, what's going on? How can I get you today? Oh, shit. Well, first of all, I'd like to say I went to your live show in Orlando last week. And oh. it was bomb. Oh, you had a good it time? It was so bomb. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, honestly, it was my first live show with you, and it was way better than I expected it to be. And I even I took my dad, and my dad's like a sixty year old, old buff Republican that likes World War Two shit, and he loved it. <laughs> Dude, really? That that's so awesome to hear. Actually, that fucking rocks. God damn, he really he had a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. I it was way it was turn like the turnout was way better than I expected it to be. And I honestly, like, and I went with a couple of high school friends, too, and they, we just weren't expecting what was going to happen. So we came in with no expectations at all. And it was cool. just like, boom, mind blown. So it was really cool. Well, goddamn. Thanks, Nadia. That makes me feel uh, really good. I've had, there are some, dude, I swear to God, I've had some shows where I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, it'll just keep me up at night, you know? But, uh. Really? 
Really? But, was that yeah, one but of those shows? No, that, I, I think that I think that one went well. I think that one went well. I mean, I'm always I'm always hard on myself, but I think uh, I think that one was fun. I'm trying to think what the highlights of that were, not to bore the listeners with. Uh, I mean, I guess this whole thing, I guess this is just an impromptu ad for my live show. But uh, what was the highlight of the Orlando? Who was? Do, who do you remember from that show? I'm trying to remember oh, who I'll came always, up. I'll always always remember the girl that was wearing the pickle grit costume with the yeah. with the eyeball hat. Yeah, that and one was pretty like, nuts. Yeah, <laughs> like her story was pretty sick. But honestly, besides that. I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Oh no! But... Don't 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 spoil anything that I don't talk about anything that I said. I don't want to spoil it for people. But anyway, we can stop. Let's don't stop talking about my live cool. show. Um, <laughs> yeah. How can I? What's what's up with you, man? So recently, I just got out of a, in my opinion, a pretty toxic and kind of abusive relationship with a guy that I met at a sex club which i mean if i meet a guy at a sex club that's immediately a red flag but (laughs) um i mean i immediately like really fell in love with him like head over heels and i kind of just kept putting off the red flags until it was kind of like too late Mm -hmm. so when i finally cut it off i felt so alone I mean, I live alone. Um, I, I'm going to college alone. I'm 22, and I'm living alone for the first time. And I, it's like the first time in a while that I've that weekends have come along, and I have like no plans. I don't have yeah. anybody to see. I don't talk to anybody. Yeah. I don't have a lot of friends at school. Not because I don't want to make friends, but my school is just so oriented around studying and and doing shit stuff like I don't really have time to even make friends so I've kind of just been on a binge on dating apps which I've kind of always told myself that I didn't want to do because I mean I don't really think that real love is found on dating apps I feel like it's just found naturally out there but I just feel so lonely like I don't know what else to do I even went to the club by myself and I mean, I didn't have a bad time, but I was literally just on my phone the whole time. <laughs> mm. Like, I don't really know, you know? Well, um, you know, I mean, I'll say this. I struggle a lot with loneliness myself. Uh, Vice made a whole 20-minute documentary about how sad and lonely I am. So that's uh, a thing. Um, so I don't know. This is you're, this is a thing that I, 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 am, I am trying to... Um, hack myself i will say about the the dating apps though is people people say that like uh real you know they're they're fake or whatever but that dating app is is just uh like a person is a person you know what i mean a yeah, dating app is yeah. just a dating app is just a a uh a way to make it so that you can meet more people the, the people you meet on the apps are not necessarily reflective of the app experience itself it's reflective of of those people you know right and you know and and that you're exactly right because i mean i have a high school friend that married a girl that he met off of tinder so it's just like it's totally possible but i just feel like i'm putting myself out there to so many people Mm -hmm. it just kind of feels weird like i've never been I'm not like an introverted person but i'm also not that extroverted like it kind of just feels like Especially on Tinder. Just like, you know, Tinder is the app for people that just want to fuck. And I can't even do that. Well, again, <laughs> I, well, again, again I mean, people say that. They're like, oh, Tinder is the app for people who just want to fuck. But, I, you know, I have, I have, I have uh, a couple of really good friends who are in, like, long-term relationships from Tinder. The, app, the apps, the people, apps are just, like, fucking services that connect people. It's, it's the actual relationship you have with the person once the app has connected you to them is reflective of the person itself and reflective of, of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but anyway, I, that's, you know, I guess, like, I don't know. So you say this is your first time that you've been uh, alone in a while. Are you, like, a, uh, a serial monogamist, as, as they might call them? Um, no, not necessarily, but I've never been into, like, polyamory or, like, you know, doing... Before, when I when I got with this 
toxic relationship guy, I was sleeping with him and then also sleeping with another guy. And it was kind of like I was talking to a couple of guys and it was that, but it, it, it always just seems to fall to one person. I feel like I'm just more comfortable with one person. I feel like talking to a lot of people and sleeping with a lot of people at the same time is kind of a lot of work, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I don't really have a lot of time to do that either. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm a pilot. I just got my pilot's license and I'm doing training oh, cool. at school. And I go to school Monday through Saturday. Um, so it's kind of hard to keep up with a lot of people at the same time. Yet I don't have, I feel like I don't have enough people. <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't really make sense. I guess it's really contradict contradictory. Now, when, to when you went when you went to the when you so you went to the club by yourself and you you did you like try to talk to anyone there? Absolutely not. No, I did not really? try to talk to anybody there because because I couldn't find anybody that was alone. If I could have found somebody that was alone, I could have probably you know went up to them and been like, "Yo, what's up? I like your shirt." Or really like sucks. And you, and were you? Yeah. And were were you were you there like looking were, like? What, did you have a mission while you were there? Were you just oh, like I, I want to meet mission. people? I had a what, mission. Was your, what was your what was your mission? Was what was your mission? Get, I was gonna get somebody's number that night. My mission was I'm gonna try and get somebody's number that night. But literally, it was a Friday night. Uh, Friday night before. Um, actually, last Friday night of spring break. Before yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, so yeah, it was last Friday. Um, so everybody was with a group or a partner and one of my biggest fears of like walking up to a guy or something is like they're with their girlfriend and like some bitches out here are crazy. Okay. And I don't want anybody to get my, the wrong idea because my first intention is always make friends first and, you know, like do whatever adult shit later. Um, but do, yeah, do you just, know how I many, do you, do you know how many single guys go out to the bars at the clubs at night? And just and wish that someone would come talk to them. Yeah, I w and I would have totally done it, but it's just like everybody was paired up or in a or in a huge group, so it's kind of weird. Maybe I just maybe I should have just gone to the bar instead of a club. I don't know. Well, no, I like I your well, I, I, I like your uh, way of thinking, like putting yourself out there. I mean, that's uh, uh, it take like going out alone to a bar or a club and like walking up to a group of people and. Like introducing yourself for, for that that takes a lot of um a lot of balls, but also it's like, dude, secret. I know you're like in your head about it, but like secretly, isn't that what everyone wants? Isn't that what you like? Like, isn't that why you go out to the bar and the club to like have an experience, meet new people? Like, you're actually when you walk up to a group of people and you you or a stranger and you start talking to them, you're you're in a way you're like doing them a service. You know, like, yeah, because you're because you're yeah. uh, that's that's what they wanted out of going out is to, to meet new people and, and experience life. I mean, I guess I, I assume that most of the time, I guess some people just want to go out to a bar and only talk to their friends. But, um, you know. Yeah, um, I totally get that. And I mean, I I'm like I said, I'm only 22 and I've never really had many experiences with bars and clubs. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've been starting to go out more and I hope to go out again, preferably with somebody, a friend, just so that I don't feel like so awkward and weird about it. But I feel like I could totally go out to a bar and talk to somebody. I would just need to find the right bar because most of the bars around this town are just like only old people or criminals. Or just you know people that can I ask I'm not what really can I for. ask uh, you don't have to get too specific if you don't want to but like where what can I ask you what city this is Oh yeah like I, well I live in Ormond Beach and that's a small town right by Daytona Beach Florida so like it's like the world world's most famous beach but it's um it's really just a tourist town for whenever Bike Week or October or Biketober Fest comes along. Yeah. Um, it's like a motorcycle town. And then obviously there's the college of Daytona state here and my college. Um, but it's really small. There's like really like pretty run down tourist town, a lot of homeless people, a lot of drug addicts and 
shootings and whatnot. It's not really, really that unsafe, but I mean, shit happens everywhere you go. I mean, I think but, you got yeah. the right idea, man. Putting your, putting yourself out there, trying to make friends. Because that's the thing. That's what I've realized is um, no one's going to hand you your life on a silver platter. You know what I mean? You actually have to go out, whether it's the bars or the dating apps or whatever, and you actually have to put yourself – like your, you know, your perfect boyfriend or girlfriend aren't just going to – and your you know, group of friends, they're not just going to appear in your lap. You have to actually like go do a bunch of fucking work. It sucks. Maybe it doesn't suck. Maybe yeah. it's good. Maybe, I don't know. I shouldn't say it sucks. It sucks a lot. I, I, I'm not going to deny that it sucks. <laughs> it I, definitely I, I, does I suck. really do. I really try to be positive and optimistic about things, but God, it sucks. It sucks you have to do work. It would be so nice if uh, you everyone was just born with uh, friends and uh, uh, fucking uh, uh, romantic partners and all these things, but you actually have to go out and you not only... You not only Listen how crazy and fucked up this is. You not only have to go out and find and make connections with other people, you also have to, like, improve yourself and shit to, like, make it so that other people <laughs> want to be around you. It's fucking exactly. lame. Exactly. You gotta it's be a whole fucking thing. On yourself. It's a yeah, whole... Well, and you have, and mean, exactly, it's part... constant. <laughs> you have to do it constantly. It's you constant. don't just do it once and then you're uh, cool forever. You have to always... Be fucking working on yourself. You have to, you have to like stay in shape so that you're like physically attractive. You have to do all these things. It's such a nightmare. Yeah, but you know what? Like that that aspect even isn't even that hard for me. My my issue is finding people that are up to that standard, up to right. you know, wanting to constantly improve, wanting to like that strive on personal growth, that yeah, yeah. are working on goals. Uh, yeah. You know, and I understand people get in ruts. Like I'm in a rut right now. I'm my apartment is a fucking mess after that breakup, and I haven't done my dishes in like over a month. But like, I mean, I'm still going to school. Like, there's still other things that yeah. are more important than doing my damn dishes. I live by myself. It would be different if I had somebody yeah. living with me. That would be kind of gross. But like, I mean, it's still gross. But I mean, the, the what I mean is like I've always been with like I guess babies. They don't mm. like these guys don't want to improve and it kind of just feels like they want to take advantage of what I have. I, it may not, it may not be like directly that it might be indirectly that, but it's just like, bruh, the last guy I was with, I don't even know why I was with him. He, well, I know I was with him. I was with him because I always see the good in people and I feel like he really had the potential to be a better person. But he didn't have a high school diploma. He couldn't keep a job. He lived with his parents. Like, he didn't really benefit me in any way. Um, besides the potential of getting better. And I don't know why I'm so attracted to that. If he could get better, I can be there for him. Yeah. And that would be so great. Like, I love yeah. the idea of growing somebody but yeah. you can't always grow with somebody i guess you know it's um this brings up a uh, some stuff that i was actually i was actually talking to some friends about this uh recently is this um well okay i'll say this first uh i think this is a realm of life it's 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 uh, these two things kind of tie into each other um the idea of like being picky when you're selecting your romantic partner and how that mm -hmm. is like can sometimes be good and sometimes be bad. I think it's a mm -hmm. good thing. I mean, this is an important fucking part of of life. And uh, if you're not picky enough, you will waste a lot of time and energy and emotions. Um, and uh, what I was gonna say is, I've been talking to my friends about this. Is this weird dynamic between like the two schools of thought in relationships, which are do you Search and search and search and be picky and be picky and be picky until you find somebody who you're compatible with on like a like almost like a hundred percent or ninety percent or whatever. Or do you pick someone and fucking make it work and grow together until you make right. yourselves compatible with one another? And I don't 
I genuinely, and this is why I was talking to my friends about this, is like I don't I don't know which of those two schools are um, the the quote unquote right one. And then, um, yeah. like, when if you are in a relationship, like, at what point do you do you go? Okay, this is a fundamental. We've we've grown enough, or or been around each other for long enough that we've discovered these sort of fundamental incompatibilities. Do we a c- cut our losses and and move on until we find someone who's more compatible with us, or maybe we've grown in different directions, or do we b fucking sit there and go to therapy and work on it together? And I don't I don't know. I really don't know. See, when I was. In that predicament, I only had really one person to go to, and that was my aunt, because she was really the only person that is that actually is still currently experiencing what I was going through, a toxic relationship with a drug addict that would beat the shit out of her. And I don't know, like, if he's still doing it, she says he's not. She says he's sober. She says that he stopped beating her, but... It just before he actually made the the, the the switch, he actually in 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 inadvertently put her in the hospital because he was beating the fuck out of her in her kitchen. She couldn't get anywhere, and, and, and mind you, my my aunt she's an Alabama country girl redneck who raises like thirty American bullies and has guns all over the house. And for this motherfucker to be able to trap her in the one area of the house that she couldn't get her gun to protect herself is fucking wild. But anyway, like, he was beating her senseless in her kitchen, and her dog, he he, he was, like, on top of her on the floor, and her dog was so riled up at this point, he went to go attack her, but she, like, moved her arm, I guess, you know, fighting him, and that dog bit her, and it ripped her arm to shreds. It looked like oh she got fucking God. attacked by an alligator. Like, these photos that I got were ridiculous. She was getting and, beaten by this guy, and then on top of that, the dog bit her? Yeah, yeah. On top of everything, the dog fucking bit her and would not let go. But, you know, when the dog bit her, the dude was like, oh, my God, what the fuck? And, you know, he was trying to do whatever, literally all he needed to do was get a belt to wrap around her arm so that she wouldn't bleed out and the motherfucker was wearing a belt the whole time but you know everybody was so freaked out like they didn't really know what to do but eventually like she went to the hospital she had to get surgery um as soon as i found that out like i went straight to alabama drove the seven hour drive down there and i stayed with her for like a whole week um with my other brother to like just taking care of her and and the dude wasn't there the dude was out of the house and whatnot and that was when they really broke up and i was like swear to god if you get back with this guy blah 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 you shouldn't be having to deal with this um to make a long story short they're together now and they're doing great so it's just like i had to contact her and i was like look diana like this is what i'm going through right now and you're the only other person that is semi close to what I'm going through. Toxic relationship, kind of got, you know, physically and mentally abused by this guy. And I'm a little traumatized, but I love him, so I don't really know whether to stick it out or not. And her advice was pretty much like, I don't want to be a hypocrite, but I would be a bad aunt if I didn't say run for the hills, man. Like, get as far away from him as you can. But if you really love him and you really think you can work it out, you know, you got to work not only with him, but with his family. He's got to get sober. Um, and it's going to be hard. But I, w- I can be a hypocrite on one side and, and say it the other on the other, you know. Um, ultimately, like, I tried to tell him, look, let's just be friends. And it worked for a second. But... <laughs> I had to remember, like, before we even got together, we were friends, and he couldn't really even be a a good friend. Like, he was, he's too emotionally attached and too obsessed with me to be my friend right now. So, that's how that kind of ended. And I I hope she's good, but you always have those scars, you know? 
I hope she's good too, man. Well, I mean, god damn, I guess it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very, uh, useful that you, you got to talk to someone close to you who's been in a similar situation. Yeah, and I really liked her answer too. I mean, she didn't want to be a hypocrite, but she was also really trying to get in with her, her situation, and... She just made me understand, like, look, if you feel like you have to have your gun on you when you're with him, it's not love. If you feel like he's going to trap you, it's not love. And that's just basically it. I feel like those are two uh, very accurate statements. Yeah. um, I, yeah. And I just feel like I can't trust, I couldn't trust him anymore. And it's really hard. when I'm, I'm the type of person that loves real hard, cares real hard and trust real hard until you lose my trust. If you break my trust, it's going to be nearly impossible to gain it back. It's going to be years for you to be able to gain my trust back because it's just like, I give it all, you know? And if you break it, especially for no good reason, it's just like, it breaks me to the point where I kind of like shut myself out from everybody else's emotions. Apart from that moment, I'm always thinking about other people's emotions first before my own. Well, I can't say first before my own. I always think about myself first because like I'm my most important person, but you know, I'm just that caring. And if somebody breaks my trust, then it's it's pretty much over after that. And it, it, I feel like so many times that I've had my trust broken, I fear that I'm going to get trust issues and not be able to trust any guy ever. And I don't want mm. that to happen either. Mm. I don't want to be that mm. type of bitch. I don't want to be like the bitch with the trust issues that's crazy. Like, I'm not, mm. I feel like I'm a pretty chill individual, but it's just like, at this point, I feel like I'm, I'm close to my breaking point in relationships, yet I crave one so badly. I don't mm. want to lower my standards just because i'm lonely but i don't know how to fill the void until then i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you something uh and maybe uh uh yeah you know uh this whole idea of like the longer you go being lonely the more you'll be like willing to accept a a situation that's like below your own standards Mm -hmm. um You know that's not a good. Uh, uh, it's not a good. Ne- it's not a good negotiating position f- with yourself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's yeah. not a good negotiation position to be in. Um, yeah. Now, how exactly you get yourself out of that situation so that you can be in a uh, better, let's call it, negotiating position with yourself and with your life and with the relationships and things you choose to enter. Um, I'm no expert on that, but. I, I think it sounds like you're doing the right thing by putting yourself out there and by uh, trying to cultivate this like abundance mindset, right? Because when you go to when you do these things that are, are, are positive for yourself, like go to the, you know, put, get yourself outside of your comfort zone and succeed, mm-hmm. you'll start to mm-hmm. realize like, yo, I'm actually uh, pretty cool. I'm actually uh, uh, pretty um, uh, able to find like people that I like and uh, you will find yourself in, in a better bargaining position. So, um, but it's hard because you, because if you're lonely and like there's an antidote to your loneliness, uh, you know, right fucking there. Um, you, you know, sometimes it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't care if that antidote to my loneliness, you know, hits me. Like, I just don't want to be alone. Um, right. But, you know, and so I understand, I understand the, um, the, the impulse for sure. But mm-hmm. I, I think if you hold out a little bit longer and you try to develop those parts of yourself that want to, you know, do things like put yourself out there and go on adventures and improve yourself and talk to people and, and whatnot. And you fucking hold strong to it. I think, uh, I think you'll find something better than, than if you had just kind of settled for for something less out of loneliness yeah yeah you're totally right 
And to um, be honest, I'm a fucking badass. I don't see why people don't talk to me more often. I think I just fly, have really you're, fly, you're, you're You're fucking Top Gun Maverick, dude. I saw that's like my dream. Well, my dream is to be an astronaut, but I, I think becoming Top Gun Maverick, that would be pretty close. <laughs> By the way, I'm, I'm going to piss off a ton of people right now. Last night, I watched uh, the first 40 minutes of Top Gun Maverick, and I fucking hated it so much and maybe it's because it's it's probably it's probably because i didn't i was like talking to my friend and i were gonna watch it and he was like i've heard that you don't need to see the original one to like the new nah, one you have to. You have yeah to that's what i it. that's what i figured that's what i figured i hate i probably only hated it because i've never seen the original top gun and i was watching it and i'm like i'm sure if i watched the first one I would like this one, but I hated it so much. And my my qualms with it are probably negated by the fact that I haven't seen the first one. But I was watching it, and I was like, this is not how real people... T- I just I like movies where like it feels like they're real people. And this felt like a mm-hmm. movie with actors reciting dialogue to each other. And, like, God, mm-hmm. it was 40 minutes. Nothing fucking happened for the first 40 minutes. They're in a bar just, like, tr- trying to be it's cool story, for, like, 40 time. minutes. It was just... It was painful, but... Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. A bunch of people are going to yeah. be like, oh, you didn't see the first one. You don't understand this guy, this thing, and whatever. Anyway, I promise anyway. you, if you watch the first one, and then you watch the second one, you'll understand, and you'll really like it, because you'll get into the story and the background of everything, because that bar is very specific to the first movie, and, like, the whole, the songs, the the characters, like, it all fits in with the first movie. So I would definitely suggest watch the first movie, and then give the second movie another chance. Like a all real right. chance. I'll, I'll watch like the first because really I'm all the because the second movie is just like it's a bunch of close up shots of like some sad black and white guy, and I'm like, oh, I guess I would feel sad about this guy if I saw the first one. But anyway, fucking you would totally feel bad, dude. Nadia, <laughs> is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Yeah, everybody, don't settle for whatever's out there. Take your time. It's gonna suck. Get a fucking vibrator and go clubbing by yourself and get ridiculously drunk. Make sure you buy an Uber and stay safe. Amen. Shit, live life to the fullest. Take care, Nadia. Thanks for calling. Take care, Lyle. Have a good night. People always forget that no matter what, you can always sit at home and jack off. And no one will ever be able to take that away from you.